Hi, good morning. Grace and peace be yours through Christ our Lord. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill from Mount Poor Lutheran Church here in Chapin. Each day, uh, Monday through Saturday, Pastor Joanna Gregg and I look forward to dwelling with you in the Word. We take a portion of Scripture out of the Christ in Our Home devotional booklet, and then we just expound on it by dwelling. It's an ancient practice uh, for reflection on Scripture. And so what you do is read a simple passage and just ask simply what jumped out at you uh, what questions might it raise, and what kind of a nudge do you feel God might be saying as if God is speaking to you through this reading? And so we're practicing that at our church this past year as a way to help us re-kind of claim this foundational understanding of who we are as God's people, and how does God participate with us in this work that God gives us to do by accompanying us every day. So today is May 8th, it's Saturday. We're looking at Mark 10, verses 42 to 45 today. And let's hear these words. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them, but it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So this is a brief passage, and as I dwell on this, uh, the verse uh, 43 jumped out at me this time. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. Um, we always understand that Jesus, when he came into the world, was kind of a radical, topsy-turvy, um, offered a radical and topsy-turvy approach to life because it was almost opposite of what the world was experiencing at the time. The Roman peace that was supposed to be there in place was out of fear. You know, if you stepped out of line, the Roman, Roman guard would just take you and persecute you and put you on a cross even. The peace of Christ was the opposite. It came from the inside out and out of a faithful approach and a loving approach to the world, not out of a fearful one. Um, and so that's kind of the understanding here. But this passage has always been, it's like a litmus test. For determining um, if we are on task as a people of God. And so as I dwell on this, the questions kind of quickly come to me. You know, is there humility and service in what we are trying to do in our work? Uh, are we thinking of and being a help to others in our living? Uh, I was, used to work with a person named Ken Callahan. He was kind of a, a guru in church, and he used to always ask, um, Always work with the PSMs. That was his thing. People served in ministry. That's the number that you want to focus on. How broad can we uh, affect other people? You know, it's uh, been said that Benjamin Franklin, even one of our founding fathers, would ask two questions every day in the morning. What good can I do today? And then in the evening, he would ponder, what good have I done today? As if to kind of put in context this life that we have and the fact that we're called to try to make it a better life. And so this kind of care and compassion directive is key to our core, to the core of Jesus's teaching. And Paul reflected in this in many of his letters, especially when he wrote in 1 Corinthians 13. You know, he talked about how um, if you have faith to move mountains but don't have love, it would be like a noisy gong or a clinging cymbal. And so the key is for love. And knowing the context for today's readings is, is helpful. In the 10th chapter of Mark, which this reading today is in the 40th verse of the 10th chapter, 42nd verse. But if you go back all the way this whole chapter of Mark, Jesus had been in the region of Judea and beyond the Jordan. He's been talking with crowds. And there's a, it opens up with him talking with the Pharisees about interpreting the commands of Moses, particularly about marriage. And they're trying to maybe trick Jesus or try to see if Jesus would offer something that would be um, contrary to what they've been doing. Next, right after that, he's blessing the children uh, and he's asking um, that they be brought to him. The, the disciples were trying to, to run interference. Keep them away. He's too busy for them. And Jesus responds, let the little children come to me. Don't stop them. For to, it is to such as these that the kingdom of God truly belongs. I tell you, whoever doesn't receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And then from there, <clears throat> Jesus um, is on another journey. And he asks a person, uh, somebody asks him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? 
and this man seemed to have followed the letter of the law by keeping all the commandments. Because, um, but Jesus sensed that his heart wasn't in it. You know, yeah, I'm doing all that. I'm doing all that. I'm doing all that. But what do I really need to do? And Jesus looks at him and says, and it says he looked at him and loved him, and said, "You lack one thing. Go and sell what you own and give money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me." And when he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. So Jesus saw that he wasn't wholeheartedly there, although he had followed all the law. Then next, Jesus looks around and he says to his disciples, how hard is it going to be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of heaven? And he's not talking about if you're rich or not, but if we amass things that we like to hold on to in the world and they have a grip on us. And his disciples were perplexed. And Jesus says, children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is full of themselves and has this richness about them to enter the kingdom. And they were greatly astounded and said to one another, well, then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, it's impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. And then Peter begins to say, look, we've left everything and followed you. And Jesus says, truly, I tell you, there's no one who's left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. So this chapter is rich. And then next, in the same chapter, Jesus speaks of his own example of service and foretells his death and resurrection and afterwards. And this is where we get to today's passage. James and John say that they won't do anything for Jesus. And they go, hey, let us sit at your left hand and your right hand because they wanted greatness in his glory. And it's to this that Jesus responds with the words from today's passage. So Jesus calls them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them and their great ones are tyrants over them, but it is not so among you. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. From the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So, these teachings are vital, not only for the disciples then, but for you and me today. And these teachings are life-giving. This uh, season of Easter, which we're still in, is one which focuses on resurrection and new life in Christ. And it's one where we think on the magnitude of what God has done for us. You know, God saw and what we were doing and, and the trouble we were in and decided to come down from heaven, dwell among us in human form, die on a cross as a sacrifice for us, and then was resurrected to show the ongoing glory. And then shared this glory through remaining with us in spirit. And we're getting ready to celebrate that on the 23rd of this month, the day of Pentecost which we proclaim and believe we receive in our own baptism. The Spirit of God becomes a part of our lives in our baptism so that we can continue in this new life of loving service towards each other, service with equity and compassion. There's a simple song I miss singing with our preschool kids, uh, but it's the same kind of song, but it has three different verses. It talks about um, love and help and serve, and it goes like this. Love, 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 that's what it's all about. Because God loves us, we love each other. Mother, father, sister, brother, everybody sing and shout. Because that's what it's all about. It's about love, love, love. It's about love, love, love. And then there's help, help, help. And then there's serve, serve, serve. And that's what it's all about. And that's what Jesus is saying today. That's what life is truly about, loving and helping and serving. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for the day and for the teachings of Jesus and for your spirit that now continues to teach us as it dwells in us. Help us to listen to it, be led by it, and to live because of it. Amen. Hey, blessings on your day.